Assalamualaikum yo 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 what's happening guys my name is Sif and welcome back to another video hope you guys are doing well sorry what you wanna know how I'm doing well I'm doing great thank you so much quarantine has been getting to me though but we keep pushing anyways I hope you're ready to know the secret to get a pass credit or an A for admins because in this video I'll be explaining my personal tactics for admins exam how to learn admins effectively and lastly at the end I'll also give you a few bonus tips for the real exam I'll leave a timestamp down below so feel free to skip to the part which you need help on all right let's get right into it Bismillahirrahmanirrahim okay this is a lot of info to take in so bear with me firstly I suggest you to watch the video once and print these files out and watch the video again to highlight the important points I'll leave a link in the description right below the like button for you to download the file untuk yang ambil admin bahasa Melayu Asif ada buat lagi satu file yang fully BM but for this video Asif akan guna file English untuk terangkan masa highlight awak boleh tengok kod yang Asif ada sediakan sebelah setiap topik untuk rujuk kalau korang tak faham Asif tengah cakap pasal topik yang mana ok we'll start at the left the reason I separated the score into only three groups which are pass, credit and A is because after you get your results and apply for colleges the way they look at your results is based on how many A credit and pass you have no one really cares if you get a B plus it's still considered as credit except for some public Uni. So I think it's better if you look up the minimum requirement if you're aiming to go to a specific public university But for the most part these three groups are what matters. Okay next question Why is A 67% credit 47% and pass 35% when it should be 70 50 and 40% So have you ever heard of the term graph akan turun? Well, basically they look at the normal distribution of every student's marks Normally most students don't do that well for admat So the minimum mark to get A credit and pass will always be reduced and these are like a rough estimate of the boundaries that will be set for SPM. Just try asking your teachers if you don't understand what I'm talking about. Anyways, that's covered. Now I'll explain the format. I've made this table to help me explain my tactics. KSSM students can also try to use these tactics for your syllabus. Leave a comment down below if you want me to make a separate video for you guys. But for now, paper 1, there are 25 questions, no choices, and questions will be based on every topic except for these 5. So for paper 1, forget about these 5 topics. Now paper 2 is the key for everyone to get marks. There's 3 sections. In section A, as usual, you have to answer every question, but we're gonna focus on section B and section C, because not only can you choose what question to answer, but each question can give up to 10 marks. This is where your aim should be. For section C, it's confirmed that only these four topics will be assessed and you can choose whichever two that you want. But for section B, it's a little random, but these two will most probably be in section B and these topics can either be in section A or section B. Now first things first, I want you to focus on solution of triangle and index number because these two questions are guaranteed and are the easiest among the four choices. Do a plo marka dalam tangan. And then we're gonna look at the section B topics which are both in paper one and paper two because these topics carry more marks overall such as coordinate geometry, linear law, function and statistics. And we're gonna add one more topic from paper two which is simultaneous equation because it's quite easy and boom. These are literally all the topics that you should focus on to pass in at maths. I've also made another list so that you can see it easier. Link is also in the description. Next, for credit, focus on all the same topics mentioned as before. But now we're gonna continue to add section B topics that are both in paper one and paper two, but slightly harder, which are gonna be circular measure and vector. And boom, that's literally all you need for credit. Now for A minus, the jump is a little bit bigger. Basically everything except for differentiation, integration, and trigonometric function. Because for me, these three are the hardest topics of at maths, which takes a lot of time to master. And time is something that we don't really have at the moment. Do note that these topics are chosen based on my preference and my experience. So feel free to mix and match your topics to focus. Example, if you want to replace logarithm with differentiation, do it because everyone is different. And lastly, if you're aiming for A or A+, you need to master every topic. Unfortunately, there's no way around that. Now that you know which topics to focus on, next question would be how do I master these topics because it's so hard. And yes, it is hard. To be honest with you, you need a lot of patience to get good at admats if you're not a natural. It took me months to get really good at this subject and I couldn't have done it without YouTube teachers Yikus Time X Plus C and Eddie Wu. The two teachers make videos for mathematics and additional mathematics. Just check their playlist for the topics which you need help on. What I do is I just lay in my bed, put my earphones and I put the speed of the video to either 2x or 1.75x. And this helps me focus so much because I really have to listen to what he's saying. If I miss something, I'll just go back 5 seconds and if he's teaching something that I already know about, I'll just skip forward. Their videos are usually quite long but by doing this, I can fully watch a 40 minute video in less than 20 minutes without losing focus, which is really good. I suggest you to watch Y equals to MX plus C if you're very exam oriented. By the way, he's almost at 100k, if we could help him get that, that would be amazing. And I also recommend you to watch Mr. Eddie Wu if you really want to understand what is going on in maths and build the love for mathematics. Like what even is logarithm? Mr. Eddie explains it perfectly in one of his 
video. Overall, if you're taking AdMets in English, I recommend you to watch Why Goes Dynamics Plus C, Eddie Wu, and AdMets Kacang. Untuk yang ambil AdMets dalam BM, I recommend Cikgu Hassan, Cikgu Chong, dan mudahnya matematik tambahan. I leave a link in the description to all their channels. Please do subscribe to them and maybe tell them that I sent you. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much to all these teachers for helping thousands of students for free. They are the real legends. So YouTube was my main method to learn ad maths, but I also used a few books, which are these two. Both were donated to me by my seniors. So if you're watching this, thank you so much. I love you. And I also recommend the Thick Success book. I never used it, but I heard it's really good. So basically what I did was I picked a topic to learn, let's say logarithm. I just search logarithm y equals time x plus c on YouTube, and then I'll pick a few videos, add to watch later, and binge watch them. I try to understand as much as I can, and then I use this book to go through its examples to see if I understand everything, and just try the questions in both books. The trick is to not spend more than 20 minutes on a question. After 20 minutes, if you still can't solve it, ask a friend or a teacher immediately. Time is money, you gotta use it wisely. Another thing I like to do is to use an app called Microsoft Math Solver. You can use it for every topic, but you can use it to solve questions that you normally wouldn't be able to using your calculator. For example, to solve this log question, all you have to do is scan it and boom, it shows the right answer straight away. Okay, next tip. I keep telling you guys this, but trial papers are the best exercise you can ever get. Again, I'll leave a link in the description where you can join the Telegram group where the admins post all the trial papers for free. The exercise in the textbook is just too easy and not similar to SPM questions at all, whereas trial papers follow the exact same format as SPM. After doing a trial paper, try to understand everything fully. Make sure if the same question comes up again, you are able to answer it. I'm telling you guys, do more trial papers, especially MRSM, SBP, and Negri Smilet. Okay, I'm editing now and I just thought of another tip. The calculators that you guys have doesn't matter which model, these calculators can do more calculations than you think, such as simultaneous equation, statistics, and even linear law. Just search these up on YouTube and there are tons of videos which show you how to do these tricks. Why equals time x plus c even has a playlist dedicated to this. If you want me to make a full video dedicated to calculators, leave a comment down below and I'll try to make one ASAP. Now back to the video. Okay, it's time for the bonus tips for the real ones that stayed until the end. For ad maths, time is so so important. Time is something that everyone struggles with. And this is cause we spend too much time on hard questions. We can prevent this by not answering the questions following the normal arrangement 1, 2, 3 till the end and instead choose the questions which you want to answer first. For paper 1, I want you to do all the easy questions or questions that you fully know how to do first and I want you to answer them in full speed as fast as you can. Our brain works the best in the first 15 minutes and efficiency degrades slowly after that. So we have to make the first 15 minutes count. Answering the easy questions will also increase your confidence and give you momentum for the rest of the paper. Trust me, this really helps. And for paper two, when you get your answer sheet, I want you to label each page one, two, three till the end because you'll be using one page per question. And then I want you to start your paper two by answering section C and B first and only then section A. Because like I said earlier in the video, section B and C gives more marks per question compared to section A. So we need to make sure even if you do run out of time, at least you'll get more marks because you've already answered all the big more questions. To add on to that, after you've answered all the questions that you know how to, I want you to just try the hard questions even if you don't know how to. Serious mind buat je. Because you never know your working might give you an extra one or two marks, which is really good. You can also do multiple workings for the same question. All you have to do is separate your two workings by drawing a line between them or by boxing them. For example, this is what I did for one of my trial papers. I did three working and tiga tiga salah but at least I got one mark for my working. Remember, the examiners will never minus mark for your other incorrect workings, but they will always give you a mark for your correct working. This rule also applies when you feel like you've made a mistake and you want to cancel the whole thing. Don't do that. Just box it and do your other working somewhere else. And you may just get a few more marks out of that. You never know. Every mark counts. And yeah, that's about it, guys. This is literally my complete guide for AdMats. If this video was in any way beneficial to you, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. I've been doing quite a lot of research for this so I really hope this video helps you. Try to follow everything I said in the video and practice practice practice. Just hold on a little longer. Push yourself to the max this month and you'll feel so satisfied when SPM is over. Trust me you got this all right. Just a little bit more. Okay subscribe for more videos like this and leave a comment on what videos I should do next. Good luck and as always aim for the best, never settle for less and let God handle the rest. Peace.